Hey guys, Atlanta Sacolate here, and uh, yeah, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but rest assured I'm still alive and well, and uh, yeah, I just figured I'd upload a video of something that I got in the mail yesterday. This is the Saberforge Bane. Wow, look at this thing. This thing is freaking wicked. Like, I don't even need to comment, just look at it. There is nothing subtle about this thing. This is a friggin' awesome lightsaber. So, uh... Yeah, I'm pretty much gonna go over the specs of the saber and just kinda review it in general. Now, a lot of people assume that this is based on the design of uh, Darth Tyrannus' lightsaber, or Count Dooku as he's more commonly referred to, but as far as I'm concerned, that's not really true. This lightsaber, from what I understand, is based on Darth Bane's lightsaber from the now-defunct Star Wars Legends universe. So, with that being said, it's actually not really clear what kind of lightsaber Darth Bane actually wielded. But if you've ever read the Darth Bane novel Path of Destruction, it's a bit vague, but they describe the saber as being hooked. So, that basically gave the idea that Bane wielded a curved lightsaber. And what's interesting about this particular lightsaber is that in order to get the curve more, like, accurate, you can see this is, the saber is actually two halves that have been, like, held together with several screws. It's not like other sabers that have been spun on a lathe and then just all the electronics are put inside. So, uh, yeah, this is actually a pretty good uh, do-it-yourself lightsaber if you ever want to build one yourself. So, yeah, it comes with, uh, got your blade plug, the one on the right, because the one on the left is the one from my old Ultra Saber's Apprentice V4. Got your cover tech wheel, then you got a set of, uh, Allen keys for these different screws. So, and then you got your Saber Forge, uh, little card thing. Then you got your recharge port. Now, uh, this is a warrior tier lightsaber, which means it doesn't have a soundboard like the champion or hero tiers from Saber Forge. But the thing is, like, because this pommel is screwed to the blade, it doesn't, like, screw off like a regular pommel would. But uh, here's how they got around that. What you gotta do is pull out the kill key here. This thing is a real pain to take out. Come on. That, that's a real problem, too, when you can't even pull out the frickin'... There we go. So, got the kill key with the Saber Forge logo on it. Then you got your little uh, recharge port there. And you'd basically plug that in there and charge it, even if it is a warrior tier. So yeah, what's interesting is that even on a warrior tier, the save, the kill key will actually kill power to it as well, if you just stick it inside of there. But you know, even if you don't just stick it inside there, I mean, it'll still just work as long as this isn't on, like it won't waste any power. So really, this axe is nothing more than just a dust cover for the recharge port. So I think I'll go over the saber from uh, top to bottom. Yeah, this pommel. You got here has got some nice, nice ridges on it for pretty good detail. It's got a nice uh, pinky uh, little guard there. Then you got this little vent here for the soundboard, which I think I might install a soundboard on here someday. I gutted my old uh, Master Replica's Darth Vader Force Effects lightsaber because it stopped working, and I pulled out the soundboard on it. So you now I think I might look up a tutorial for how to put the soundboard in here. I might need to get a smaller speaker, but, you know, something I might want to do one day. Yeah, you got these, uh, two set screws here, which you can install the CoverTech wheel on either one of these. Depends whether you're right-handed or left-handed, I guess, or just personal preference, I don't know. Got these nice little dimples here. Seam is a little big, I think I might have to modify that later. 
just so it doesn't leave a big seam. And then we got this nice kind of rib cage looking design here. So yeah, that looks pretty cool. And we got these uh, little finger grooves. So that way you can get like a good, uh, nice hold on it. Got your recharge port and got this nice little low profile uh, activation switch. So it's a good thing. You won't press it by accident if you're spinning it around. And uh, yeah, on the emitter shroud, these, these little points here and up here are pretty sharp. They didn't really sand those down pretty good, so yeah, I might sand those down myself later. Then you got a little retention key right here for the LED, in case you ever want to do like quick connects. But before you get the saber, I just want to let you know now, you can't get quick connects with the Bane as of uh, August 2016. Yeah, because I ordered a quick connects on this thing along with a red LED. This is the 12 watt plus, by the way. But, um, yeah, they emailed me saying, like, you know, they can't do that, and so they gave me a refund, and I asked for one for the extra red LED as well. So, yeah, at least we were, to, we were able to correct that. I mean, still kind of disappointed, but, you know, not a big deal. Maybe one day I'll look up a soldering tutorial and figure out how to install the quick mix myself. But yeah, this is a pretty nice, pretty nice emitter shroud. Got this nice little gap here, so more light comes through, and you got these little ridges and everything. I mean, their attention to detail is really great. And you got these two set screws. This one on mine is simply just to hold the thing in place, the shroud, while this one actually acts as a blade retention screw. So you loosen this one and remove the blade. It's only about an inch of retention, but from what I know so far, it, uh, it holds up pretty well. I've already hit this blade against a bunch of stuff. It's the V4 Infinity Edge. This is a 32 inch. So, uh, yeah. Holds up pretty good. Then you got this nice, uh, nice claw here. Looks very, very sithy. So, yeah. I've read in a lot of forums, like, people are concerned. Oh, is this claw gonna, like, bend or anything if I try to hit it? Like, is it gonna just, like come off. It's like, guys, I'm literally pressing this thing with all my force and it is not giving way. And it's pretty neat how this claw actually runs all the way down to the pommel, to the pinky guard. So, uh, yeah, this is actually a full tang uh, claw. Yeah, it's looks really, looks really nice. It looks like both Looks like it would be both a Jedi and a Sith lightsaber. But if you want to go even more Sith, they have this available in the weathered finish. Yeah, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube that the weathered finish is a pretty popular one for the saber. But, you know, me personally, I didn't want to get that. Just because, like, when I get a saber, I like to have it just look clean and, like, brand new. But, I mean, you know, that's, that's just my personal opinion. So now, go ahead and turn this on. 12 watt plus cyan. Whoa. That looks freaking amazing. Yeah, this thing is bright as frick. Yeah, like I've, I've had this thing on at night and spinning it around and it, it casts like a huge field of light around you. Yeah, this thing is freaking beautiful. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty nice lightsaber. It's the first uh, curved one that I've ever owned. I was a little bit torn between getting this one and the Vanquish, which is another curved saber on Saber Forge. Yeah, like, the Vanquish is kind of a lightsaber that's split on a lathe and then just bent using, like, a pipe bender, I believe. And, uh, that one's a bit more ergonomic, but... Honestly, I kind of liked, I kind of wanted to get the Bane a little bit more just because of the cast hilt. And with my prior experience with like Ultra Sabers, that one broke on me and it was pretty much, 
it was going to be pretty difficult for me to repair and I just didn't feel like doing it. And with this cast aluminum like hilt, I can just easily crack the thing open and repair something if anything goes wrong. So yeah, that's nice. Also, I wasn't ex I wasn't exactly sure how like a curved hilt would handle like when spinning or holding with both hands. But honestly, I was surprised at just how comfortable it was cuz when your hand is at that angle, it just feels more natural cuz like if you were holding it straight, you bend like with a lot of force, it's kind of uncomfortable, but if you swing and then you bend like that while your hand is down here, then yeah, it's not so bad. And it gives you more control over the orientation of your blade, because like even a fraction of an inch in a sword duel can really make a difference. So uh, yeah, this is a pretty freaking awesome saber. So it definitely doesn't look like a saber I'd want to mess with. It's pretty dangerous. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the blade out. Okay. Gotta keep on screwing. There we go. That's uh, so the V4 Infinity Edge. The bullet tip threaded so it doesn't come out like with Ultra Sabers. Yeah, this thing weighs about the same as uh, Ultra Sabers uh, Heavy Grade. Yeah, their attention to detail is far more superb than Ultra. <clears throat> Sorry, Ultra Sabers. Kind of choked there. I don't know what that was. But yeah. Really nice hilt. The pommel really gives it a, a good counterweight, so that way when you're wielding this with one hand, I mean, you have more control over it than if it didn't have this. Yeah. Go ahead and put the blade plug that it came in here. So yeah, this is the Bane blade plug, which is a little bit different from a Saber Forge blade plug, because it's had like the top part shaved off and it's been cut down a little bit just to accommodate the short retention of the Bane, but other than that it's just a regular Saber Forge blade plug, so I'll just Yeah. Still kind of lets light through, but yeah. I think I might cut it down a little bit more just because I want it to be all the way inside the hilt. Yeah, but the, the cyan color really looks nice. It's a little bit greener, I'd say, than a regular, uh, like a regular saber blue. Because I, I once had like a Luke Skywalker Force Effects lightsaber, and yeah, it's a little bit greener than that. Like, I would describe this as like maybe maybe like an ocean blue or something. But yeah, overall, the Bane is a really great lightsaber. It's the first curved one that I've ever owned. And uh, yeah, I think I might one day mod this thing to um, hopefully have it accommodate my uh, likings with the quick mix and whatnot, and less wide of a seam. So yeah, this thing took three months to arrive, but I mean, as of right now, Saber Forge has a pretty long lead time due to the large number of orders they have to process. And I mean, with all this, with all this detail you gotta put into your sabers, I mean, I guess I could understand where they're coming from when they say that. Also, I don't believe I'm going to install the cover check wheel on here. What I think I might do one day is like burrow one hole right here and one on the other side and maybe put like a D-ring on here. Then I think it'll, it'll be perfect. So yeah, that's pretty much overall my review of the Saber Forge Bane.
gray lightsaber looks awesome, feels awesome. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more.